No matter how you slice it, content is a humongous part of SEO success. You're just not gonna maximize results for your clients if you're not creating or improving a significant amount of content on the website. And this can get challenging if you're working with 50, 100, 200 clients. So in this video, what I'm gonna to present to you is the process that our agency uses to crank out hundreds of pieces of content every single month for our clients with no writers. So in order to make this work, there's really two keys that you have to do. One is you have to specialize. If you are trying to work with all sorts of different clients, e-commerce, lawyers, dentists, doctors, coffee shops, it's gonna be really, really hard to create content at scale because you're gonna to have to do so much research, you're gonna need so much context, and it's gonna be really hard to scale this. And two is you gotta templatize because we're gonna use AI to create this content for us. And if you don't have a very specific structure, page brief template that you're feeding the AI, you're gonna get all sorts of different results because every time AI comes out a little bit different and you're not gonna be able to get the content that you need out of this. So this is the process that we use end to end to create content for our agency. I'm gonna walk you through step by step here. So on the left hand side, you see four different inputs that we use to feed each client's content workbook and content calendar. This is how we generate topics that we're gonna work on throughout the life of the campaign. Depending on the scope of the client, we'll usually do anywhere from 50 to 100 pages over a six to eight month period. It's quite a bit of content. And if we have to come up with that content every single time for every single client, we have you know 75 plus clients right now. It's a tremendous amount of work. It's gonna bog down our operations team and it's gonna put a real big stress on the hiring and building of our team. So the four inputs that we use one is existing pages. So the first thing that we do for any of our clients is we run our website quality audit that's inside of the Blueprint Training. It's essentially an SEO audit on steroids. It crawls the entire website and gives us every single piece of data that we need for every page in that website to understand what actions that we wanna take. So any page that we tag as rewrite, update, you know, update page titles, that's where we start. And the reason why we start there is because the fastest turnaround of traffic always comes from pages that are already on the website. So if your client has a good job creating content in the past, or they've got a good, pretty good base of content, that's where you wanna start. You wanna start with the content that they already have. So we take those pages and we migrate them in to our content workbook. That's source number one. Source number two is gonna be a content gap analysis. So if you are not familiar with an industry or client that you're working with, what you can do is you can run a content gap which says, show me the keywords that my client is not ranking for that these three, five, 10 competitors are ranking for. And then you take those gaps in the keywords on your client site and you use those stuff to start formulating topics. Now again, because all we do is work with law firms, we know this ahead of time. So we're actually doing this content gap analysis during the sales process, and it's really just a scoping. We have a big list of pages that we know that every attorney website should have, and it's also broken down by the special agent of the attorney, if they're an injury and accident attorney, if they're a family law or divorce attorney, we know what all those pages should be, and then we're able to do a very quick gap analysis to see what they don't have versus what they need to have, and we put that in the scope. So now we've got the existing pages, and then we've also got the pages that they need to build that they don't currently have that they're missing on their website. So that's source number two. Number three would be a competitor content gap. So basically what I had just said beforehand, if we were gonna go and find new keywords, we don't really do this. I just put this in here for context because again, we're walking into these campaigns ahead of time, already knowing exactly what they have. And the final source is coming from our content library. So again, this is where that templatize on top of the specialized comes into play. Our agency has a content library because we've worked with so many attorneys over the past couple of years that we've now got a base. We know having worked with hundreds of attorney websites and seeing thousands of competitor websites, we've got a really good base and understanding of all the content that they should have on top of that contact app. So the contact app that I showed you is really focused on what we call bottom funnel pages service pages, location pages, practice area pages. Those are key pages that we are able to figure out during the sales process. But then to get to that rest of that number of topics that I told you, if we're doing 100 topics, then we'll start folding in blog and resource content. So the way that we also structure this is we're focused on tackling bottom funnel pages first. Again, meaning service pages, practice area pages, product pages, the ones that we know are attached to keywords at the bottom of the search funnel that if we can rank them for, they're gonna not just drive traffic, but it's gonna drive leads and conversions, which is ultimately why we're here. So this is the four sources that we use to fill out the content workbook, these templates. And once we have them all migrated in here, now we've got a list. We have 50, 100, 200 sometimes topics inside of a singular place. And we have it tagged by if this is new content, if this is existing content, what type of page it is. And then we start to fill in the data. What's the search volume? What are the supported keywords that we need? And then from there we stop. 
Once we have that, we then pass to the client and we say, do you approve these topics? And once they do, then we go through and we set a priority for these topics. Now, the next thing that we do is we build a content brief. So what you'll notice is that we haven't done any keyword research up to this point. And that's incredibly intentional. I used to work, uh, my agency was acquired and the agency that acquired my agency was really big on keyword research. And we used to do what we would call, I think it was called the, the total addressable market keyword research de deliverable. And it was crazy. There was like 10,000 to 50,000 keywords in it. It was so big that we had to put it in a zip file <laughs> to deliver to the client. And I remember looking at that and saying, what in the hell is the client supposed to do with all these keywords? Look at them and be like, hey, this is great, but what action do I take off this? Do I just start creating content? Do I put in this with paid search? The way I'm going with this is that keyword research is a waste of time until you know the topic that you wanna do the research for. So we don't do keyword research until we've got all these topics identified. So you can see how much time this saves us. To get to this point where we have all the topics identified, we're talking about an hour, maybe two hours of work as opposed to 20, 40, 60 hours of work to do all that research and compile it in there. And again, this only happens if you're specialized and templatized in order to get to this point. So once we have that done, the client says, okay, these are the topics that I approve. We have them prioritized. Let's say we're doing six pages per month for the client. The next step is we build a content brief. So inside of that content brief template, that's when we do keyword research. We identify the main keywords, the supporting keywords, the secondary keywords, all the different keywords that are gonna support the bulk of that page to give context for that page. Once we have that, then we go to ChatGPT and we have ChatGPT to help us to build the actual content outline. So we have a big prompt that we send into ChatGPT that says, Hey chat, help me build this page level outline for this client. These are the keywords that I want included, that I want to rank for. These are five competitors that I want you to scan their pages and I want you to understand what their subheadings are. And I want you to put this all into your database and then I want you to spit out something brand new, something unique. Please do not copy any of the competitors that you see. You have to be very specific with the prompts and give me an outline. So then we'll spit out an outline for you that has headlines, uh, you know, little subtopics, descriptions, everything in there. And then once we have that, we'll put it in here, we'll write out the title, the H1, all that different stuff. And then we continue on with ChatGPT to have it write it. And this is key when you're trying to use AI to write content. We've tested so many tools out there. Yeah, there's a lot of great AI writing tools out there, but in my opinion, there's nothing better than ChatGPT because ChatGPT is iterative, it's conversational. You can go back and forth with it and you can continue to improve and adjust and build on the content that you already have. So what you don't wanna do is feed it an outline or feed it some keywords and say, hey, write me a blog post that's 2000 words because what you're gonna get is garbage. What you need to have is that outline first and then you build that article section by section. Feed it the introduction. I need 250 words. Uh, you know, break up the paragraphs into short sentences, externally linked to any sources that you're using here, make it very empathetic, whatever you want to do, whoever you're writing it for, and you feed it to it section by section. And then once you have all those sections done, you go through it, you read it, and then you adjust them even more. You say, hey, I really need a data point here. If we're talking about, if the page is about car accident attorneys in Miami, we should say, hey, well, maybe we really want to cite some data about how many car accidents were in Miami last year. Can you go out and find that source and add it in? And it will do that for you. Now, What's really important is to make sure that you're editing and you're checking this stuff because if you're not, ChatGPT is not always right. You have to make sure that you're human editing and really going through and checking these things in detail. So the next thing that we'll do is we'll format and publish. This says Neuron Writer. We actually really like Surfer SEO. Now we've migrated over to it. But now once we have that completed article, we've had a human go through and edit it and read it. Then we'll drop it into an SEO optimization tool like Surfer, Neuron Writer. There's a bunch of tools out there that do it. That will allow us to then optimize for all the specific keywords and the density and all that different stuff and the subheadings. And they have these auto-optimized stuff that's really cool that will do that all for you and really help to speed this all up. And again, we also still have a human editor going through and make sure that this all reads properly. And then from there, these tools actually will plug directly into WordPress and you can publish that content directly on the website. And then we'll just make sure to track that content. We'll you know, record the URL, we'll see how it does in Search Console over time. So that's our full process. Again, if you wanna be able to create content at scale right now, which is incredibly doable, and it doesn't cost that much because you really don't need a true writer anymore to write all this content, of course you can. And if you do want to use a human writer, if you're not comfortable using AI, instead of just having the AI write the content, you just plug a human writer in here and they can do that as well. But the AI will really speed up the outline process and the optimization and publishing process as well. So if you don't want to use AI, you have a writer, then by all means, use that writer to have them do this. But we built this process to really cut down on our costs internally while scaling output 
and continuously getting great results. Actually, pretty much all of our clients now we've got the system down so good, we're able to get them to rank in that AI answer box within a couple of days because of how we're so good at using the AI to optimize the content, especially the opening paragraphs of it. So if you want more information on this, we've got a full training inside of the Blueprint training that teaches you how to create content at scale for clients. I give you all the templates that I showed in here. It's only $199. So if you want that, you can hit the link below to get instant access. And if not, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.